Welcome to A level and AP physics a place where you can improve your understanding of physics with confidence in this video I will explain question number 11 from May June 2018 paper and this paper is from CI IGCSC physics Question number 11 part A is asking us state the type of radioactive emission that causes here yeah, the first one that causes the proton number of a nuclei to decrease by one so we need to understand how many type of radiations are there nuclear radiations how many so the type of nuclear radiations we need to understand first one is alpha particle or alpha decay alpha particle is the first type of radiation and the second one is beta particles beta particles so beta particle actually there are two types of beta particles uh, one we call is beta plus and the second one what we call is beta minus beta minus beta plus is simply is fast moving so beta plus beta plus actually before i explain beta plus let me explain to you what is beta minus beta minus is actually simply fast moving electron so this is simply fast moving electron fast moving electron this is what we need to understand what is beta plus this is antiparticle of electron and often we call this one its name is positron antiparticle of electron so we can also write down this is antiparticle this is antiparticle of electron so its name is positron so this is antiparticle so its name is positron so this is what you need to understand now the last one actually the third one is gamma decay so this is gamma radiation so this is gamma radiation in fact this is electromagnetic wave so this is em wave so this is em wave now so this is one thing we need to understand the next one we need to understand what is alpha decay alpha decay let's say we have a uh, nucleus it has atomic number z it has mass number a so if this is alpha decay means alpha particle is emitted uh, so let's say this is nucleus y is formed uh, and here alpha particle is emitted so this is alpha decay so its atomic number will decrease by 2 and the mass number will decrease by 4 and this is alpha decay so let me write down here this is what we call is alpha decay uh, the next one let's say again we have x nucleus and mass number is a atomic number is z and let's say in this case beta minus is emitted beta minus this is beta minus decay uh, this is beta minus decay at IGCSC level simply you need to understand beta minus decay you don't need to understand what is beta plus decay beta plus decay we will study at AAS level uh, so then we need to understand uh, the nucleus Y so simply let me draw here this is Y so the atomic number of this one will increase by one and the mass number does not change so this is what we need to understand uh, the last one is a gamma decay so Z again is the atomic number A is the mass number so if gamma decay then in this case this will be still X Z this is A and gamma simply means that there is no change in atomic number there is no change in mass number so simply what we call often we use this star here it means this is unstable nucleus just become stable by emitting extra energy so the unstable becomes simply stable nucleus by emitting extra energy in form of gamma radiations or electromagnetic waves so this is kind of gamma decay 
So this is what we need to understand before we can answer this question. The first one is asking us the proton number of a nuclei to increase by one. So what kind of decay is that in which the proton number or atomic number increases by one. So that is simply you would say that is beta decay. Simply you can say beta decay. How about next one? The nuclear number of nuclei to decrease by four. So a mass number or the nuclear number, they are the same, so decreases by four. So this is alpha decay. No change in the proton number. So let me write down proton number is also atomic number. So, proton number is also atomic number. And nuclear number is also called mass number. So, we can write down here, this is mass number. Okay, no change in proton number, no change in the nucleon number. So, that one is gamma decay. So, this is what we need to understand simply. If you have this understanding, this question is just a piece of cake. Very simple, very straightforward one. So this is how we can answer. So how you need to write the answer. This is simply you need to write down beta particle, alpha particle. But please remember you should not say gamma particle because gamma are rays. So you can say gamma rays, not gamma particle. Okay, so that's all for part A. Let's move on to part B now. Okay, for part B, what we need to understand is that uh, we have beam of alpha particles is entering into electric field. So this electric field is here. So we need to sketch the path of the beam in the electric field. So we need to understand if alpha particle is here, alpha particle, for example, this has positive charge. So simply we can write draw here so alpha particle has positive charge so the charge on alpha particle is equal to charge on two electrons charge on two electrons so i will just write here alpha particle it has plus two charge positive charge so the force on this one will be down it will be attracted towards negative plate. So the force, the electric force on this one will be down. So it will follow kind of parabolic path, parabolic path. So it will follow parabolic path, parabolic path. So how to sketch? So this is how we can sketch. So this is how we can sketch. So you can see this is kind of parabolic but you need to be careful after that until here it is parabolic but after that it has to be a straight line because there will be no force acting on this one so here the no electrical force there is no electrical force after it's better to draw a straight line there will be gravitational force acting on that it's better just draw like this Okay, so this is so this is what we need to understand about part B. Simply you have to draw like this. Okay, but there is no electric force when it is outside of the field. There is no electric force, only gravity. So we can also draw parabolic after that because gravity it will be acting, uh, there will be a force of gravity acting on that. Okay, next one. So the last part, uh, so we need to understand is half-life is given. So you can see here, the half-life is given. That is 56 seconds. What else is given? A uh, sample has this number of atoms are given. So we need to predict the number of alpha particles in the sample emits in the next 168 seconds 168 seconds so how we can answer this question now uh, in order to answer this question so you need to understand first of all we need to find out half life so we can find out the number of half lives we can simply 
find out so this is our total time and this is time for one half life this is the time for one half life so how many half lives we have three half lives so this is the initial amount of uh, atoms initial amount of atoms so three half lives mean three times you have to multiply by one by two so that's the reason we multiply three times so we have these number of atoms so these are remaining number of atoms remaining so how many alpha particles have been emitted in each decay one alpha particle is emitted so how we can find out total initial minus remaining so it means these number of atoms alpha particles have been emitted are alpha particles have been emitted so this is is the number of alpha particles emitted so to make it a little bit simple i can simply say that the total number of alpha particles or you can say the total number of alpha particles we need to understand total number of atoms decayed it's better to say that we can say the total number of atoms we have are the total number of nuclei we have at the starting has to be equal to number of atoms decayed number of atoms decayed how many atoms have been decayed plus number of atoms remaining number of atoms remaining so this is one way maybe you will find this writing very helpful maybe for some student this will be very helpful so number of atoms de uh, decayed number of atoms decayed and number of atoms remaining so let me write down this one a little bit in a proper way because that writing was not very clean so we can say number of atoms decayed number of atoms decayed Okay, so this is how we can answer this question. This part is a little confusing for some students at IDCS level. Sometimes they just write this answer, but this is number of atoms remaining. Okay, remaining. So if you need to find the number of atoms emitted, so you have to subtract from the initial number of atoms. 